This one is uh, Slender Man. It's a uh, creepy pasta made by an author of Noon. I don't know who made it. I can never seem to find the um, author thing area. But here we go. After waking up with a jolt, the girl lay in bed a few seconds longer, reaching over to switch on her bedside lamp. She tried to remember exactly what had stolen her sweet slumber away. When she couldn't, the brunette swung her legs over the side of the bed and heaved herself up, checking the time on her phone. She snorted when she saw it was midnight, the witching hour. Knowing that sleep would only evade her, she left her bedroom for the kitchen, a good cup of coffee on her mind. As she passed by her front door, a chill spread like liquid fire down her spine. It's only winter, she told herself, focusing again on the coffee plan, measuring out scoops and water, and preparing her cup kept, on, kept her occupied. But as the dark liquid boiled, she had nothing left to keep her mind from wandering off. The chill returned and she can help but glance behind her to the front door. It stood there innocently, innocently enough, just as always. The dead bulb was still in place and she could see nothing amiss with it. Turning back to her coffee, she did her best to forget about the feeling. With her cup in hand, she started back towards her bedroom as she walked toward the as she walked by the front door, she decided the quick glance of the peephole should calm her restless mind. The chill worsened with each step she took toward the door and further away from safety and warmth of her blankets. She pressed her empty hand against the cold metal door and took a deep breath before leading her eye to the peephole. At first, she could only see the inky blackness and somehow seemed the swirl in itself. When she blinked in surprise, a, the void melted away. She wished it hadn't, and its place there stood. What she could only guess was a man. The limbs were long and inhumanly awkward, with bulky joints branching off so into several arms, not unlike the branches of a tree. The creature was dra draped in a black suit, somehow m making the thing making the thing more nightmarish to her. The icing on the proverbial cake, however, was what as was what passed as that hellish thing's face. It was as though her mind had blurred the ghastly visage to spare herself further shock and horror. She shoved herself away from the door and with the hand pressed against it. The scalding mug of coffee fell, the liquid burning in her bare legs, and she fell backwards and tried to crawl away from the door. She knew somehow that her mind hadn't been playing tricks on her. As she crab walked away from the door, she watched as the trend rolls as as trendrels as black as the void that she first saw a snake through the cracks. A girl trapped between the instinct and fl uh, to flee and the gut feeling to not turn her back on the door. When the door jolted, the urge to flee overcame her and she slipped in the burning black fluid as she tried to make it back to her room. She knew deep down that she was trapping herself in a corner, but she had to get away from the door. The girl was halfway down the hallway when she heard the previously locked door creak open. She screamed and slipped into a wall, cracking her chin on it and stunning her. After that, there was only blackness. Nicole, a warm male voice, snapped 
the woman now of her trance as she turned around. She was met by her, one of her sister's doctors. She nodded, not sure what to say, anything, or even if she could find her voice if she did have something to say. That morning, she had gotten an urgent phone call from the hospital saying that her sister, Lunji, was there. Before they could, had even let her see her, the doctors had pulled her out to the side and insisted that they talk about her about talk to her about what might have happened. Phrases like self-inflicted and an assault have been thrown around and Nicole felt her mind real. She still hadn't fully understood what they had been saying until she saw Lindsay with her own eyes. Her little sister had a bandage wrapped around her head covering both of her ears as well as her eyes. They said it had to keep her, they had to keep her dead, her now deadened eyes from drying out to try to keep infection out of the wounds Lindsay had made to her ears. The doctors had guessed that either she or someone else had jammed a pencil into them to keep off her off balance or deafen herself against something. There was a mix of first and second Gray burns on her hands, legs, and feet. From what was assumed to be coffee, her neighbors found slipped all over the entry to her apartment. As Nicole walked into her sister's hospital from the, for the first time, she thought she had spied a silhouette of a man in the window. That she knew was impossible. Her sister's room was on the third story of the hospital. That is it.